All right, everybody, everybody, you with your main man, Anthony Brogdon, today. And I got a smooth cat on the channel. Ooh, he going to tell you some black history that I know you don't know. If you know, you might know some of it, but you ain't going to know how he put it to you. And, and this is what we do as strong inspirations. I find these intelligent, conscious experts, good people to come on the channel and to share this with you. And, and it's, it's, it's amazing because, you know, uh, I must admit, and, and we've all heard this in some form or fashion. People be like, man, you know, black people don't keep it, don't keep the history alive, you know, and so on and so forth. Well, this is what I'm doing here. It, it, it can't get no simpler than this because I find these people and I let them do the talking. Now, I, as you notice, I do ask some questions because I got no clue in half of what they're saying. And I figure if you don't, maybe I'm asking questions that you would want me to ask. And so that's the premise behind it. But have you seen the video I got on the guy out of Saint Mo? I mean Fort Mose, uh, in, in 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 Florida, where the black people escaped out of mostly you know Georgia and South Carolina, and when they got there, because it was still Spanish, they 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 were considered uh, uh, free. Watch that video. Did you see the one that I did with the guy? whose great grandfather, they was about to lynch in Troy, Alabama. They had my man at the tree with the rope on his nose, his neck, and they let him go. Watch mm. that video. Did you see the one with the guy that I got who is very, very, he's, he's a Motown historian. And he talks about the history of Motown. Watch that video. How about this one? Did you see the one where I got where the guy, his great great grandfather, is one of the last slaves to be brought to America in 1860 when the government said no more? That guy still tried to do it. He did get caught, but they did bring him in. And this guy on the channel, one of them, his great great grandfather. Watch that video because then they developed the area in near mobile Mobile, Alabama called Africa Town. Check mm -hmm. it out. I got one more. How about this one? Did you see the one I got with the lady whose great great uncles and aunts was killed <clears throat> in Elaine, Arkansas, at another one of them massacres? All cousin people said we want to kind of unionize. We tired of y'all saying we ain't pick enough cotton. And so we hold you money at the end of the season. And we got to come back next year. Watch that video. You're going to like what my man got to tell you. He got a good looking backdrops and everything. He ready, man. Let me tell you something. Hit the subscribe button on Strong Inspirations. It's free. I don't even ask no information. It just say, hey, I subscribe and I like you what you're doing. That's all. Hit the like button on this video. He's going to put it down on you. Hit the notifications bell because I'm putting up three, four videos a week. Uh, oh, we jamming here. Uh, hit, hit, tell somebody about Strong Inspirations. Uh, just share the link to the video and, and put it on your social media. Get to let the word flow. Lastly, uh, I'm going to go fast. You know I got my own festival. I, I'm, I'm on the upcome in Kansas City, Kansas. It's called Freedom Quindaro. I'm hosting this. And you know, my brothers and sisters, we're going to have a good time. We're going to do some dancing. I got a DJ. When, my, when I have my parties, I tell the DJ, I give him a list of songs I want to play. I ain't just on for your cup. This I want to. This is the list. You got to play all the songs in this list. It's going to go like that. We're going to have a fish fry Friday. And then we're going to honor some of the people out of that area. Sadly, we're going to take tours of the area, and then we're going to have a picnic where the people cook the food. We're going to cook the hot dogs on site. And I'm going to try to make sure the line is not long. You get your hot dog, your hamburger, your chicken, ribs, stuff like that. And I feed you for a very nominal fee. So check it out. Go to uh, my website, businessintheblack.net. Check me out on this note. I'm a filmmaker. This is a movie. A, a, a documentary that I've done on the rise of black business in America, slaves who went to college, slaves who owned businesses, and then used the money to buy their own freedom. 
It's uh, streaming on Amazon. Very good film. Not just because I did it. I had a bunch of people tell me that. And then I wrote this book called Black Business Book. It's got over 200 facts, similar to the movie, but more comprehensive. I get a lot of stuff. I had one guy say, man, I ain't never heard some of them names. It's in the book. And the book is on, uh, on Amazon also, but you can just get it. Go to my website where you can see all that I'm doing because I got some other things that's pretty big. Uh, it's called businessintheblack.net. Now you hear me use this word strong a lot. Strong stands for strength, tenacity, resilience, and a sense of oneness, nobility, and grace. I like the word strong. Strong defines my next guest. He's a strong brother. Come on, man, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Get it on strong inspirations. All right, brother. Thank you, Anthony, man. Uh, my name is Alex Green. Um, I'm part owner of Harriet Tubman Tours along with my wife. We share the life and legacy of Harriet Tubman in Dorchester County, where she was enslaved and born. Okay. So uh, we got a lot of we got a lot of different things we do, but we we keep it real. We keep it 100. We keep it in in the black atmosphere where we share this with the mass of people. You know, yeah. so we we got a lot of information that we lay out. All right, uh, but before we get to that, and I like what you're doing, my man. I saw. I tell you that up front. Uh, uh, where you from? Where your family? How? I, where y'all from? Well, I'm actually from um, in the area where I'm at now in Maryland. Okay. So, I live in Dorchester County where all this is happening, but um, I'm from a place called Bellevue, Maryland, a little one block town in the really? country, man. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's it's got Frederick Douglass history there, man. It's a whole bunch of history per, per square foot around here. So historical as it makes. Now, 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 now um, uh, is there black history in your town where you grew up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I grew up in a historical black family. Um, my family, the Turners, were one of the first Black families on the actual um, bay that have a seafood company. So my great-grandfather were entrepreneurs, man. They started this business. They bought some land. They started selling crabs and oysters and all this stuff. So it's been a family business. It's been closed since the 90s. But uh, Not, So they up, did the ship? They did the fishing to get the oysters in that kind of thing? Oh yeah, man. I grew up, I grew up on the water, man. Grew up uh, crabbing, fishing, oyster. Oh, really? Okay. I yeah. like it, but I, hey, Brad, don't tell nobody I told you this. I'm scared of taking the fish off the hook. <laughs> yeah. I, I it's easy, man. They fish. got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. How, how you do crab fishing? How, how does that go? Well, how you do it is it's a, it's a trot line. So what you do is you throw a buoy off on one end and a weight, and then you put a line in between it. And the weight holds the line down and it goes on the bottom and lays on the bottom. And the crabs are on the, on the bottom and you put bait on this line and they come up to it, bite it. And you pull the boat around and go and put it on a roller. And the roller comes up and goes over top of that and you sit there and you dip them off. Put them in the box. Put them in the so, box. Um, uh, in, in one setting, you might catch how many crabs? Oh man, when when the when when the market was right, when I was coming up, man, we catch man anywhere ten to twenty bushels. Uh, been you know been over harvested through the years. So, but yeah, we we it wasn't nothing when I was uh, about sixteen years old. I had a boat of my own because that's what happened. You know, when you got a certain age, yeah. you did you know you went on your own. So I got a boat of my own, man. I could, sixteen years old, I was making three four hundred dollars a day. Really, I love it. Yeah, I mean, but of course. That's the seafood industry. It's very prosperous. You know yeah. what I mean? It depends on, you know, the market, who you sell to. But okay. the uh, but the the cool thing about our family is, man, they leverage their ability to do business with the white people. So they sold them their products and built their corporation up. And then they started their own. Then people were selling to them. Oh, OK. OK. So now how about this? When... Um... Are there are there stories of slaves doing crab fishing and that kind of thing? Is that is that something that the uh, enslaver would would ask them to do uh, for dinner for the household, the plantation? Do you know or anything like that? Well, believe it or not, the same delicacies that we eat today, like crabs and lobsters, in some case, uh, shellfish and all that stuff wasn't a delicacy back in those days. Matter of fact, they would give that food to the slaves. Oh, because really? they, 
they didn't know they didn't know the value in the crab meat or nothing like that because they were so plentiful they used to crawl off into the you know off the land and you know off the water into the land and they were using for fertilizer oh, hold on, hold on catch, some of that. you say they used to the crabs did crabs would come up they would come up sometimes you know up on the shore and stuff you know it was plentiful they were everywhere and so it wasn't um, no big deal to get it, go just go grab no. one and put him in the water. No, it wasn't, it wasn't a whole lot of eating of the crabs like they got now. Like you go buy a bushel of crabs or go buy a dozen of crabs. It wasn't like that back in those days. They used that for fertilizer for the gardens and different things. They just ground them up and throw them in the garden and made good fertilizer for the food. Oh, the really? Yeah, yeah. So and this so, area. So when you say that, then <clears throat> quite possibly. Um, that was something that the slaves were able to eat readily. Was sure, crab. sure, sure. They were, they were, they, they were digging on that years for years. Oh, they the ones that found out. They the ones that found out the value in that. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with hog chitlins. That was all given to the given to the slaves. Oh, no question. They would, and but look now, everybody want to who eats them yeah. wants to have a hog chitlin. You know what yeah. I mean? They, they give they give the waste which was valuable. In, in itself to the enslaved and thought say I was giving the waste and we go and eat the bacon and the ham. Oh. But then they made a meal out of it. They took their they took the situation and, and made it prosperous. Yes, I love it. H have you how about this? Have you ever been it, bitten by a crab? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Now I got bit one time really bad. I built over a basket and it was you know working and didn't didn't take into account how close I was to the basket. And he pinched me on my stomach. And that's about the worst I got bit. But that hurt. Brain. Oh, yeah. They're strong, man. They're strong. They can't bite your, your, your fingers or nothing. No. Yeah. Oh, but they get. Oh, man. So now Maryland is on that uh, that southern border tip. Isn't that kind of the, the way it all lays out? Because Maryland yeah. uh, had slaves. Yes. Uh, but then some of Maryland was free at the same time. Is that the scenario? Well, Maryland was a confederately held state. It was the last line of, of the Confederacy. Anything above Maryland up until 1850 was uh, considered slave, the South. Anything below that, the Mason-Dixon line actually divides the North from the South. Okay. So that's what makes it so pivotal around here is because just the next state up, a day's journey, and you're in free land, Pennsylvania, oh. where all the African Americans are that are free. They're, they're walking around, they got businesses, they got homes, they, you know, they're free people. You know what I mean? So, but you come down into good old Maryland, it's a Confederate held state where they own slaves. Now, they, but Maryland wasn't talking about seceding from the Union. No, no, mm -mm. no. Uh, and so, how does um, Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass kind of fit into the scenario of Maryland. So both of them are born in a pivotal time. You know, they're born almost in the exodus of slavery. Okay, so hold on, let me Harriet start to that on. Now you, but, but Frederick Douglass is before Harriet Tubman. Or vice yeah, he's versa. a few years. Yeah, he's a few years older than her. Oh, a few years. Okay. Yeah, he's a few years older than her. Okay. But he's born. He's born in the next county over. It's a river that divides the two counties, Dorchester and Talbot. They're enslaved in the same time, miles apart. But they don't never know each other in slavery because you you just don't be walking around when you're enslaved. You just you know you're you're where you're supposed to be enslaved at. But they're born. She's born 1822, and we know that the Lincoln puts the proclamation. On the books in 1861, it doesn't be come codified until 1865 with the 13th Amendment. Right. But before then, she grows up in this atmosphere of a slave. But the key to this all is that the endurance and the skill set, intelligence of African American people are high here. They're built builders, they're home builders, they're furniture builders. They're doing all this work in this in this atmosphere and learning, especially her. She's learning from her environment. She's actually learning inside of slavery. She takes the other part that, that helps her learn is, from what I gather some other people on the channel, is because they're close to the, uh, the seaboard, 
that they that get, she's gathering this information from the people up north that's that's sailing down the black people, the free black people, and otherwise. And so she's hearing some of these stories. Sure, she's getting the information they're called blackjacks, black sailors, black sailors that sailed up and down the bay and in in, in, the, in the oceans. They had their freedom because they would give them freedom when they got on the boat because if they didn't, when they got to free land, they would run anyway. So, but he was mariners, and you would have black captains in some cases. Oh, but really? they are information. Yes, the information. My grandfather, my grandfather, he wasn't a slave. He was born in eight, uh, 1906, but he was a he was a black captain on the Chesapeake Bay. He sailed for a white family called the Valiants, real young, and he um, he made a career out of that. You know, sailing two mass schooner. But these information carriers would bring back information of freedom. They would talk about Pennsylvania and what they seen there. That would spark the interest in the people of, you know, wanting that freedom. It would give them a sense of, of something to look forward to um, in this institution, this terrible institution called slavery. They, right. they had nothing else to hold on to but their faith and their freedom. And, and they, they had the faith, but the freedom that they had to the access. They had to get to the right people to be able to get that. And that's what you call the Underground Railroad. I love it. How about this one? So if I'm in Maryland and I don't have to go but a uh, hundred miles to get to a free land, but once I get there, that, that don't necessarily mean that I, I'm home free. Well, you don't even have to go that far if you're in Dorchester County. You only got a day or so journey, maybe 50, 60 miles. It's yeah. that much. Hey, I'm telling you, where, where I'm at right now, Right where I'm at, where my home is right now, is on the byway system. It is down the road from a place called the Linchester Mill, one of the hubs of the Underground Railroad system here. This is where the free and the slave mix together. Now, the enslavers did not take an account of that potent mix where you have free African Americans and you have enslaved African Americans. The information being passed between the two is powerful. Because you get this information, and then you go to the sympathizers, and this is how the information carries, it goes from the sympathizers to the safe house, and they move you out to freedom. A day or so journey. Now, with that also, same place, Delaware is also slave hell, but some of the state, some of the counties are free, like Seaford. You can go to Seaford, get on a train, and get to Pennsylvania with some doctor papers. So this is, man, this is this is like the mecca almost of the Underground Railroad system because it's right at the last line of freedom, the Mason-Dixon line. Uh, but again, what uh, just because you're that close and you get on the other side, don't necessarily mean you can sleep at night. Because they, uh, how, how, okay, th uh, this is my question. How notorious yeah. are the slave catchers? Are, are, are there hundreds of them trying to catch slaves to bring them back? Or is that just, uh, you know, so many guys? You, you follow my question there? Yeah, so once you get to Pennsylvania, you have this gentleman in Pennsylvania called William Still, look him up. Heard, Strong yeah. black brother, um, president of the Anti-Slavery Society, along with another gentleman by the name of Frederick Douglass. This system is set up with information. Once you get there, they start to give you tools of how to introduce you into society. You get a job, you know, you keep your nose clean, you start mingling with the, with the society that is free at this time. So it's not that you just stare and out in the open and wide open, you got people to help you with this network. That's another basis of the Underground Railroad system here. What makes it so powerful for Harriet Tubman, all of these components are put together for her. She finds them out and she works them to the ex extreme. She continues to work with these people, these different areas, and she helps people not only access their freedom, but gain it, meaning you keep on going with it. You don't, you don't, you just don't come free. But 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 Harriet Tubman, she's she's more noted because what? What makes her so famous? It makes her so famous because she helped emancipate a lot of people. And the key to this is that she not only that helped them, she came back into the institution of slavery. Yeah. That's something you really didn't do. Once you got once you got free, 
you stayed free. You stayed in Philadelphia. You went on, raised your family, did what you had to do. But she said, if I'm free, I want my people to be free. That's powerful because you wanted to take the chance to reach out and help somebody else. And that's what she did. She came back inside the system numerous times to, to help people gain their freedom. So, and that's what she so noted. Yes, yeah, you're on a good point there, my man. So she now she she's already because I know she went all the way to to St. Catharines, Canada, and yes. still came back. Yes. And when she came back, she she sent them a note through those sailors and somebody else is telling me this. To, hey, I tell my cousin Josie that mm -hmm. I, I'll be back down there. Uh, uh, I might get there by Thursday or Friday. And when I get there, I need you to find a way in the middle of the night to meet me by the bushes at the waterfront. And we're mm -hmm. going to go back up north. I'm taking you back with me. Sure. Something sure. like that. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, a lot of the system in my studies the last 10 years, when you find out with these escapes, they're, they're, they're methodically planned in a certain time, right? You would find any, any document you may read, any escape paper you may read, if you look and see where it happens, it happens between September and January oh, in really? the colder month. It happens, it happens through those times. Now, you do have escapes that happen during the summer months. The reason being, when they put the system together here, I would find out because of the length of night, because you have longer days, I mean, you have shorter days and longer nights in the winter time. So that gives you more time to run because you hide by day, you run by night. So you would find that these escapes that happened here, the famous escapes that she did, like with her two brothers and emancipating her mother and father, they were doing done during the holiday time. Matter of fact, during Christmas. Yeah, because Christmas that wasn't the enslaver kind of loose on them a little bit. Uh, Y'all can you know go out and celebrate, and that might and that gave them the op opportunity. Well, Doctor Anthony Thompson, the actual enslaver of Harriet, Ben, her father, and you know Araminta, which her name is. Mm -hmm. Um. Nothing good, nothing good I can say about slavery at all, period. Right. So I don't sugarcoat it. Right. It's, it, it the, point, the point of it is that they call themselves giving them some little bit of freedom by letting them have Christmas with their families and kind of like celebrate, right? right? The intelligence of the Black people, our adaptability to, to, to reconcile the situation is we took that advantage and used it to run, to gain our freedom. So when you say loose, I understand what you're saying, but they wouldn't backing off anything. They just thought that, hey, I just, you know, give you a little candy here and you, yeah, you know, you'll be a good little, you'll be a good little, you'll be a good little slave. And on top of that, she used that. The Underground Railroad system used that opportunity to uh, access the free. Harry, when when, Harry, when Harry. people fled. Is there something that said th uh, that they fled with? Uh, they had a little, you know, you, sometimes you see a stick with a bag on the back. I'm sure that's a depiction. Was there, is there something to that? Like, I'm going to take a, a one more pair of clothes. I wear dark clothes at night. I got to have on my best shoes because it's a little colder. Any of that kind of thing, you think? Bro, let me tell you something. When you, when you, when you, you can't even imagine what slavery was like but you can imagine being slave to something. And you take that and magnify that 100,000 times. When it's time to go, you get on the road and go. It is, you really have to endure the elements. It's, you really don't have time that I can find that you can grab something and go, even though you're, 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 you're got it in your mind, you're gonna do it. But that's all stuff that they put in the new age to, to, to give you the the picture of what slavery was like to them. And that's that's not true. I mean, because you the, the freedom of the people was very important to them. It was you. sacred to them. I it was very you. sacred to them. It I was it was information that they shared and kept secret. I they kept you. it to themselves. And once they got the opportunity to access it, it's whatever you had to do to continue on with that. Let, let so me those, ask you this. When uh, when a guy or a lady escaped, uh, the enslaver knew the next day that they wasn't around. 
So now sure. we're on the look. So you ain't got much time. To, you you might have tried to say, let me leave the earliest part of the night so I can get as far away before they come to find me the next morning and to see I'm gone. Is that is that the way it goes? Sure, sure. So the opportune time is to go as early as you can. But you have to wait for guidance. And this is where uh, Harry Tubman is very key because she knows the land. She knows how to travel. The average African-American enslaved didn't know but the property they were on. I so you got, got to you. Have, you got you got to have this leader, this this person that's going to take you out. I got right? you. And then, and then she knows the quickest way and the route to get you to freedom. And you got to obey. You got to you got to you got to be able to endure. You got to do all these things that you got to be because these are the things that laid out before. It's not haphazardly. We just took off and run like we savages. So we're not savages. We right. want our freedom. Right. And, and if you're not going to give it to us, we're going to access it another way. Let me ask you this. Do you know of uh, that the best route would have been along the water bank so that at a time you can run in the water, that that, that would kill your scent? Because I've heard some story about uh, taking coffee with you. I mean, you follow what I'm, what I'm getting with this. Yeah, I got you. So the same place I'm talking about, the Linchester Mill, this hub, right. this information station, right? Right beside it is a place called Hunting Creek. It's the narrowest point of the Chop Tank River, the mighty Chop Tank River that runs the same river I was telling you about we used to crab and fish on right. and still there today. The mariners used to get in and out. The same creek narrows down to about 10 foot wide and about a foot deep. Also, this creek runs true north. It runs north. You get to the mill, you get in the creek, and you go against the current. You're heading to freedom. You're you in the water. The, you're in the water. You go. You go with the water. You're going back in slavery. Simplicity inside of this is uh, inside of this system made the success of the escape very, very real. Because even if you did not get the help. You got to the mill, you got to the water and follow this creek and it runs you right dead north, runs you to freedom. Well, I, I, right on this one. Did, had you heard that there were things that they did to, 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 to throw off their scent though for the, cause did the enslaving yeah. catchers, what did they do to go catch the people? Did they just run that same route and saw some or did they take dogs with them, uh, bloodhounds or something like that to, 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 to catch up with the people? Yeah, so they, they use tracking dogs, hounds, um, to track them. Um, once you get in the water, it automatically breaks the scent. So you, you have nothing to go by. Oh, really? So the dog, yeah, the dog, the dog, the dog loses the scent. And you don't you don't stay in the water the whole time. You get in, you move out, get in, because you know it's kind of hard to run through that water. And if oh. it's cold, it's definitely, you know, okay. but they have tracking. Now, her success came from the sympathizer houses. The people that did not believe in the institution of slavery and were willing to help inside of this institution to help free African American people. That's what made it so successful. Because you go so far and then you go to a sympathizer house like the James Webb cabin, real cabin right today, you can go in. Black brother, free, owns his own cabin and phone, but his wife and children are slaves. They're owned by somebody else. But this brother decides to stay in the institution and work as a free black man, but help with the system. He could just as well, he could have just as well took his family and took on off went to Philadelphia as well, but he's seen the need to help. Do you have a change. story of somebody who escaped and got caught? Oh yeah, plenty of them got caught. Plenty of them got caught because the simple fact is this is the pretty much the, the, the butterfly, I mean, the, the, the butter on the bread type of stuff. But most people, when they heard about freedom, they wanted it instantly because they didn't want to be slaves unless your mind was, you know, put okay. in that criteria. And some ran for themselves. If you ever get a chance to get here, Dorchester County, you look at on a map, is one of the rural places on the United States, it's almost surrounded by water on one side. Okay. And it's very wooded areas. Okay. I mean, it's just massive. It's the second largest county in the state of Maryland. But they knew this when the colonists came here and, and started to do, you know, work the land and stuff, that 
it would be virtually impossible to get out of here because you either had to learn how to swim or you had to know how to navigate to get to north. Um, when they caught him, what that, that was a harsh punishment there, wasn't it? Well, I'm gonna tell you something around here. You do you do find um a lot of the you know the cruel punishment of you know actually running away but i'm gonna give you a perfect example yeah. her father ben ross a very highly skilled black man harry tubman's father ben ross he was a timber inspector for dr anthony thompson he was a timber he, inspector timber inspector he was like what you call a logger i say timber inspector that's what the brother was because he went in this man's thousands of acres and cut down trees and then he processed them in his lumber mill. So he had the skill set of an inspector doing that job at that time. He didn't get the recognition because you. he was a slave. I got you. I got you. So he was really, really respected by Dr. Thompson, but he didn't respect him as a man. He respected him as a worker. He respected him as a slave, a person that he owned. I got you. But he had Dr. Thompson's ear, meaning he would listen to him about some of the things that he would do in this area. Dr. Thompson, I'm going to cut this tree. Dr. Thompson would do that. You know what I mean? And that candor, I'm saying it like that. Of course, it wasn't. he didn't present himself like that. Yeah. But that's the power he had. Now, Dr. Thompson didn't beat Ben. Why would he? Because that's a valuable asset to him. We are assets. I we are assets to them. We are assets to them. So I everybody, you. as you see, didn't get whipped and beat like we see on television. That didn't I go on. You. Because you don't take your brand new Cadillac and run it, you know. I got one. you. I understand the logic. I understand logic. So now, uh, as we uh, run along the timeline, when you get past the, the county that you're talking about, what is the first town of freedom? Well, you got to get to Pennsylvania, and it's the Pennsylvania line. And once you get across the Pennsylvania line, Kennel Square, that's where the action starts to happen. But you want to get into the city of Philadelphia. You want to get there because that's where all of the things are happening. That's where you can stay amongst all of the other free. You know what I mean? You got black people free there. You got you got people, black folks owning businesses there. I got so you. That, I got you. So that's where you that's what you move into. You get a job with one of the black business owners, or you start a job, or you start you know doing your thing. I got you. Now on your tour, what do you show on your tour? Okay, so what's the name I of it again? And then, and then we Harriet, get to the website at the end and all that. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So it's called Harriet Tubman Tours. And of course, we share the life and legacy of Harriet Tubman in Dorchester County. It's a three and a half hour interactive tour, which since COVID, we call, we do the ride along program where we have cars that we go around. And we start the tour off with, you know, telling about Araminta, um, when she was born and all these things. And Who then we that? dive in. Araminta Ross is her birth name. Oh, really? That's Harry Tubman's birth name. Araminta Ross. Her, she took, when she emancipated herself in 49, she took her mother's name, Harriet, and her first husband's name, last name, Tubman. Tubman has nothing to do with the family name at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's one for the books. Yes, yeah, it is. Right, right. And so when yeah, we start yeah. off, we get you, we get you introduced, we get you acclimated of yeah, where yeah, you at. The tour. Yeah, right, right. Where you at? You're in Dorchester County. Slavery here is totally different at this time in Harry Tubman because no cotton, there's no tobacco, it's farming, it's trapping, and it's timbering. That's what goes on around here at that time. So there's nobody working in no cotton fields, nobody picking no tobacco, none of that stuff. And Confederately held Cambridge is very staunch on keeping slavery in act. They want to keep it. So we roll through the town, give you some information on what you're seeing, some colonial style houses, and we roll up on the courthouse. The courthouse is the first stop where we explain this is where Harriet Tubman orchestrated her first rescue attempt. She didn't come back because she wouldn't come to a courthouse and the Underground Railroad system could not work in that criteria because it's a legal entity. It's a place of justice and injustice. They're putting down the rule of law, but also they're enslaving and selling the African-American people at the same spot. Right. She finds about our niece Kasaya being sold. She doesn't come back, but William Steele and the Underground Railroad System orchestrates through the 
through the Underground Railroad system to help them emancipate from that location by boat. You get on the boat, go to Baltimore, get on the train, go to Pennsylvania. First stop, second stop is the Long Wharf for the Port of Entry for the enslaved. Only two documented trips there from the coast of Africa. One of those, Harriet Tubman's grandmother was on. So Harry, Araminta is born in America. Her mother's born in America. Her grandmother comes in on slaves. So we show you that, whip around, head downtown. And we kind of mix it up a little bit because once we get you acclimated with that, then we start to bring in not only slavery, but the civil rights era, how, how things didn't change even after slavery a little bit. It got a little bit better, but then you start pulling the Jim Crow. Right. Different things. So we roll through a black neighborhood, show you how prominent it was, show your church that Frederick Douglass installed, and then we get into the black, free black neighborhoods, free black communities <clears throat> after slavery. Uh, it, it, the, the site that the plantation that we that she was uh that she was on is where? It's out in uh Bucktown. Yep, we go by there as well. Is that is that is that is that one of those historical sites that the building is still standing and that kind of thing? No, nah, it's just a farm. The original 40 acre farm is there, still there. And it's got a marker that's been there for years since the 70s. But the house and all that stuff has been long yeah, gone. That's but gone. that's the yeah, that's the original 40, that's the original 40 acre farm. When we pull up there, it's a little pull-off spot there. And we pull up there, and that's the hollow ground where her sister was sold into slavery. Um, she actually grew up in the institution right at that spot. This is where Harriet Tubman really grew up at. She wasn't born there, but she grew up there. And then she she lives elsewhere. Uh, I know she lived in St. Catherine, but she also yeah. lived in, uh, I think, in other parts. Uh, yeah. where, where else did she live? I, I, that's my question. All I, all I know her living in St. Catharines and she moved around because she even came to New Jersey, Cape May, because that was a part of her journey coming back because you had to have money inside of this thing to do these things, you know, even though these, these sympathizers were helping, they still needed some tangible assets I to make this you. thing work, make it work. So there um, and St. Catharines. Now you gotta understand this too. After 1850, the Fugitive Slave Act, the Fugitive Slave Law, this horrible law, which pretty much says that the former, that the Southern slaveholders want the North to be just like the South. They want, they want to turn slavery all of the East Coast. Right. This causes the migration of the African American people to Canada. That's why they go to Canada because it's Fugitive Slave Law, and and how they're trying, they're coming into Philadelphia. New York, they're coming up there and grabbing folk and taking them back down south. Not okay. where they were Oh, really? They're grabbing, they're grabbing folks, bringing them right back down south. Not where you came from. They're doing this for a profit. They're doing this to make, make their face look good, basically. And they're selling them. Good movie to watch, 12 Years a Slave. Actual, actual, actual yeah. movie. Yeah, that's, that's, that's actually what happened. That's because of the Fugitive Slave Law. Yeah, the second enactment of this. And, and then and then uh, and where all the, along is this in the Maryland is is Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass is enslaved in in Talbot County where I grew up at. He's a slave on the Y plantation. He's actually born on a place in called Tuckahoe. Um, he doesn't know his mother, but he knows his grandmother. His grandmother takes him to the Y plantation where he's enslaved. Gets he gets treated real poorly. But this brother stands up for himself and starts to become physical because he, you know, you're not going to keep beating on me. Oh, He's really? Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah. He becomes physical. He, he, and then he's traded. And we're not traded, but given to one the brother-in-law in Baltimore. Then his brother-in-law passed. So he comes back on the east side of Maryland, on the coastal bay, and he stays in a place called St. Michael's. Now, this is very historic because this is where this brother starts um, his own studies, you know, his own uh, um, Sunday school. He's enslaved uh, by a Methodist preacher <laughs> and this white Methodist preacher, which he does physically beat them all the time. So Frederick Douglass gets his roots and ground from Talbot County. Once he leaves and goes back to Baltimore, this is where he meets his wife, his first wife, Anna Merrick. 
Anna Mary Douglas. She's a free black woman. She's born a free black woman. She helps him. She can continue to enhance his learning. He Does takes she a buy his of, freedom? She didn't what you call buy it, but she but was a big part of it because she actually helped him access it, you know, through having a sailor suit getting on a boat and he went up to New York. So that's 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 the basics of, of that. But one thing she taught him is because all through this violence, because you just can't be beaten on all folks all the time and think everybody's gonna get the same response. She taught him how to take his rage from fist to voice. He started using it. He's one of the greatest orators of all time. Yeah, you can hear it yeah. in his speech. Yeah. You can hear it in his speech. It's powerful, just like something's gonna punch you side your head out yeah. of his mouth. Yeah. So he she she taught him how to do that. Don't be so physical, Frederick. Be vocal. He, he, he divorces her and gets with the white woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. from what I gather, because I've been to the Anacostia, to the house, yeah. the white woman yeah. was like his secretary or something and just she kept owning. Is she that kind of how you hear the story? She was his secretary. <laughs> she was his secretary. Hey. She was know, German, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... Yeah, I understand that, but that is what that's what happened. So she, yeah, she lives that, in the yeah. house after that, and then they go off. They go off, be married, man. Yeah, oh, he goes man. on. Yeah, yeah, he goes off. Yeah. But I mean, he still speaks so profoundly against this institution. You know, I mean, he continues to do that, even though brother beside my white lady, they you know, that's his thing, but still he still moves and continues to fight. Against this very horrible does, does, does Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman interact in any way? Sure, sure. Once she emancipates herself, she she becomes um, um, one of his friends. You know what I mean? They communicate. They communicate together because in Rochester, when they're moving north, his house is one of the stops going up to Canada. Oh, really? Actually, yeah. So he's in Rochester now. He's in, came from England. He's, he's got his freedom now, but still he's working in the system. Now you would thought that, you know, he would, you know, say, hey man, you know, I've done what I got to do. You know, I'm wealthy now. I don't need to be, you know, mess around like that. Like most of us think, you know, when we get to a certain point in life, you know, don't want to reach back. Yeah. But he reached back and said, hey, I, you know, when you're going up. So he wrote a memoir about it. You have to look it up. Uh, you know, he wrote a letter to her. Basically he, he told her in the letter, that what you do in the dark, I do in the light, basically. Oh, really? So, yeah, he really, he wrote the, you know, you gotta look up the letter from, um, Fred to, uh, to Harriet Tubman from Frederick Douglass. It's real powerful. As we, as, as we kind of come up to close, Harriet Tubman, uh, I don't, it, there's only just a few pictures of her for the most part. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a few. It's, it's, a, it's a few of her when she was in Canada. They got the latest one they got when she was in Cape May when she was a younger woman. She yeah, somebody said her. that. Yeah, she was in Cape May then. And, and they got a few others. They, they got a military photo of her that's rarely. I oh, got really? you know, I got a copy of it. But uh, it's something written about her when she was up in St. Catharines. He couldn't write herself. No, this is the good read. And, and the thing about it is, I have questions, and we do a lot of tours. I have a lot of questions. People say, well, she couldn't read or write, but this sister was so intelligent, she could read maps. Listen, she she actually, after she finished all this stuff, and, and she emancipated her mom and her dad, and she takes them 625 miles to Canada, she turns around and comes all the way down South Carolina to the Cumbie River and helps General Montgomery pull a river raid off to help free 750 people. Nurse, spy, scout. She did all these things in Low County. Now, when she On did that, she, I, I think somebody said she didn't have but seven people with her or something in the troop. Yeah, she didn't have a whole lot. I got a book I'm reading right now. Um, it's right around here somewhere. I got a book I'm reading now about Low County. I went down there a couple months ago, went down there to the river. I, can't, I couldn't even imagine how she did it. But she had the skill set she learned from here in Dorchester County because it's winding rivers and creeks and yeah. all that she had to work in. So she took that same 
information and transpired later years to help people still emancipate themselves. What is what what would you say uh, as we again one more? What would you say about Harriet that was funny? Was there something funny about her, like a funny saying that she did? Or that, like, a, you know, like some you say, damn, Harriet, uh, she sold clothes in the evenings. And I know somebody alluded to how she made money. Was there something about her that she, you know what I mean? Uh, she was married a couple of times. Is there something, a little known story about her? How about that one? Well, I, I, I don't I don't really find anything that she did. Cause I think she was a serious sister, believe it or not. Okay. But I always say this. I, I always say this. You know, she was married twice. Her first husband was John Tubman. Her second husband was Nelson Davis. And she, he was 23 years younger than her. Right. Yeah. So and she lived to be 93 years old. And so, I, you know, I just say, you know, that's, you know, she married a younger man to keep herself young. Basically, so oh, yeah, really? we, so yeah, yeah, so but most most of it, most of it um, in her life and the studies I have done around her is pretty much um, seeing how intelligent she was on adapting to her environment in slavery, and that's like it's it can get really deep, but yeah. when, when, she, when you really look at it, the the African American people were intelligent resilient, adaptability, adaptability, all these things we didn't get credit for and still don't in some areas. Yeah. Unless you, unless you, unless you stick your hand way out. Right, 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 right. They were that in the beginning. They, they, that's the stuff, the adaptability. They did, they did these things inside of the institution, survive, family, love, cares, all these things, unselfish acts. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what makes her so powerful because she unselfishly came back inside of the institution numerous of times to help free people she didn't even know. She oh, didn't even I know. got you. I got you. What's the I, website for the tours? Uh, our website is www.harrietubbintours.com. Okay. We're going we're gonna to put that we're going to put that in the description and and so on and so forth. And so how does this uh how does this make you feel telling this story? Cuz and, and and I'm asking you in this regard. Are you, does it, is it a downer at some point to have to continually tell the brutality of slavery or, and some of that, or you, you are you a kind of immune to it? And, or you, your whole motive, not whole, but a lot of your motivation is how, re, how beautiful and resilient she was. I know there's a dichotomy there. Yeah. So no, it's no downer for me. You know, I, I've set this up in my life to be what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Right. Reason being, because of the simple fact, we have to have the recognition that's due to us. And the only way we're going to get this recognition is if we put our voice first in front of everything that we do I love and it. future to do. And so when I look at this and I look at my forefathers, I look at my family, I look at how, how they survive, that gives me more strength to keep going on because that's, that's what they did. They did this and lay back and said, oh, no, uh, they, they went on and did what they had to do. So, no, I, you know, uh, yeah. I, I don't I don't I don't feel no ways down about it. Some things I, I definitely don't like. And when I share this information, it's shared on a positive note. I, got I know you. all the, I know all the negative things about it, the whippings, the beatings and, and the rapes and all this stuff. But, you know, one thing we survived inside of this institution, we thrive in knowledge, community intelligence and all these things, we went forth inside of it. Harry Tubb is a perfect model. I got, that's closing remark right there, everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, was, did, 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 did Harriet say something all the time? You know how somebody, you, you know, like, uh, did she have a saying, a model, uh, you know, anything like that? Anything come to mind? She said, she said a couple of things when she, you know, when she did, did an interview. She says she says she was a conductor on the railroad for seven long years. She said she never ran her train off the track, and she never lost a passenger. So That's she didn't she have was. to kill anybody who wanted to go back and got scared or nothing. It's been a lot of controversy about that, and I'm going to tell you my light on that. Right? Okay. This sister probably this this sister probably had to carry a gun, and she carried a gun for protection. Right? If you're helping people emancipate themselves. 
If you got the love in your heart to help the African American people, why would you want to kill them? I got you. I got you. If something got out of source, she handled it. Like we would handle anything else. But we, we're not going into this situation thinking like you. she carrying a gun to, to, to pop you if you if you say something wrong. No, she's gonna handle the situation. Not saying she ain't gotta put it up to your nose or your mouth or whatever to say, hey, get yourself together. Right, I but got then, you. But the love overweighs all of that. I got you. Boom. There it is. Well, hey, hey, man, I thank you for coming on the channel. Everybody, you, until I'm telling you, I find thank these you, people. I'm so excited. Yeah, we covering like every you. from every angle. Now, what's your take on the, her being on the 20? Hey man, I can't wait. Uh, and you know, it, it's it's something that's just due, right? Um, it's been a long time coming for a lot of things, but we just don't want to put all our hopes and treasures in earthly vessels. We got so much work to do. Don't just focus on the 20, focus on the 100. Focus on something that's going to take us more higher. Take us on you. equality, voters' rights act. All of these things are going on in our life today. I That's got you. And let's um, keep putting the work in that 20. Yeah, don't yeah. put it to the side and let them forget. But also yeah. don't forget about you trying to stop us from voting. Does, does she have accommodations from the federal government other than, uh, you know, this big honor? But yeah, uh, there are historical markers of most note. Is there a heavier Tubman Day celebrated somewhere in America? That kind of thing. Yes, yeah, it's, it's one here in Maryland. They have a how are you telling me today? And matter of fact, this year, and you need to try to get down, and everybody try to need to get down because we got some great things going on. Yeah. It's the 200th anniversary for her birth. So we got a lot of stuff going oh, on. Oh, that's what I show. heard. That's right. Sure is. Yeah. Uh, and you'll have some of that on your website. Uh, the yeah, the man. Celebrations plug in. things. Yep. Plug I in, love man. it. Yeah, I heard plug it's in. 200 years. Yeah, that's beautiful. And she lived to be 90 something years old. Yep, yep. 93. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. Well, hey, man, thanks again for coming on the channel. Everybody you, hit man. the subscribe button. Uh, uh, hit the like button on this video because we took you deeper. Hit the notifications bell. When the videos come up, you get notified. You get a ding, a shock, or something to let you okay. know. Sit down and watch this thing for about 40, 50 minutes. And then uh, the website for his tours and, and whatnot, let's promote that. Um... Uh, and to you, I say, my brother, I mean this with all sincerity, man. I want you to stay strong, stay safe, stay on your grind. I love that you have come up with this and you and your wife tag teaming them people. Yep. She doing so it much. in her voice and you doing it in yours and now they got it all together. Yep. Uh, We're going to come down there and see them tours and, and support that uh, and your efforts. I really like that. Um, with that, I'll say bye-bye. We out, man. Appreciate Peace. you. Peace. Peace. <laughs> yes.